We're going to start by casting on. We're just going to take that yarn, wrap it around the finger, and create a loop. Again, take that yarn that you're working with, wrap it around, make an X. Take that piece of yarn and pull it through the middle and just hold and pull very gently, make a loop, and then we're going to attach it to our anchor peg. If, if you don't have an anchor peg, just pick a peg and start with that and attach the yarn just as I'm doing here with the anchor peg. And then we're going to start our cast on. So take your working yarn and wrap it around each one of the pegs, just as I'm doing here. Go all the way around the loom. We've made it around the loom and now we're going to start the next part. So we're going to half wrap each peg and then we're going to take the bottom stitch and place it over the top. So we're going to take the bottom stitch and place it over the top of the peg which is knitting over. We're going to continue doing this all the way around the loom until we get to our anchor peg. Okay, so we're just pushing our stitches down a little. Now we're going to start the next row and we're going to do the rib stitch. So what we're going to do is e-wrap three pegs and then we're going to purl two pegs. So again, we're going to e-wrap three and purl two. I definitely suggest keeping a notebook right beside you to keep track of your work, your stitches, if you have to abruptly get up or go do something, it's always good to mark down where you left. If you're anything like me, I forget. Um, also, so what I'm doing here is I'm e-wrapping my three pegs and then I'm purling. Now I'm doing this for two reasons. One is to kind of keep my brain in order so I know where I'm at and what stitch I'm supposed to be doing. And then it just, it, 
I like the way it works up. It works up a little faster, so I just like to do it this way. Um, sometimes I forget and I do the e-wrap anyway, but for the most part, I try to keep it to where I am doing my e-wraps and then I'm purling so I know exactly what I'm doing so I don't lose track. If you have a 41 peg loom, at the end of the row, you will end it with three e-wraps and three purls instead of the three e-wraps and two purls. So once I have my row done of the three e-wraps and the three pearls, then I'm going to go back through and do my e-wraps. So first I like to do my pearls, like I said, and then I know where I'm at, and then I go back and do the e-wrap. Continue this pattern of three knits and two purls and again don't forget at the end of the row you'll want to do three e-wraps and three purls so that means the last six pegs on the loom will be three e-wraps and three purls and then you'll start your new row going around and that's where you'll see the anchor peg we're going to do this for 29 rows. So again, I did my pearls. Now I'm gonna go through and do my e-wraps. So I'm just gonna take the bottom over the top on all of the e-wrap stitches.
it's time to change to our red color so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the working yarn of the white off and this is how it's looking the part here is where we did our three pearls at the end of the row and you can barely even tell so we're gonna go ahead and cut about where it's at five inches or so and just place the white yarn aside then we're gonna take our red yarn and we're gonna make a slip knot with that red yarn so just like we did before we're gonna take the yarn wrap it around our finger make a loop and place it on peg one so not where we cut our white yarn but right next to it so again there's the white and we're going to put it right next to it so we're going to do a slip knot just like before and then we're going to attach it to the first peg after we tie the two strings together we're going to take our tool and just pop that red over the peg and then we're going to pull on it and then the knot will come out and now we've changed colors. So now we can use the red and we're gonna be all good to go. So we're gonna start out our first row and we're gonna knit the first peg and what we're gonna do is just half wrap that peg And then the second peg, we're going to do a purl stitch. We're gonna go knit, purl, knit, purl, alternating from one to the other. For this project, we're going to do one row where it's knit, purl, knit, purl, all the way around the loom, and then the next row is going to be purl knit, purl knit, purl knit. Those two together will be one row. So combining those two equals one row. We're going to do seven rows. Those two into one we're going to do that seven times and I will leave the instructions in the description box. Now we're starting the next row. So we're going to start with a purl first and then we're going to knit and then we're going to purl. So we're going to continue doing that. Now it's time to change back to the white so we're going to do the same procedure that we did when we changed to the red. We're going to make a slip knot and we're going to attach it to the loom. So go ahead and tighten the slip knot onto the peg. So now that the slip knot is tightened, we're gonna take those two pieces of yarn and tie them together just like we did before.
we're going to take that yarn piece off the white just like we did before when we changed to the red slip it off the peg and then go ahead and pull on our white and then our color is changed and now we're ready to go back to the white part of the hat we're going to resume by doing the three e-wraps and the two pearls with the three e-wraps and the three pearls at the end just like we did before so again we're going to go back to doing three e-wraps and two pearls all the way around the loom again i would definitely advise keeping pen a pen and a piece of paper nearby or mark notes into your phone on where you left off in case you get distracted it's just really helpful and if you're gonna do the three e-wraps and leave them as is as I was doing earlier make sure that you stick with it and don't forget like you know I sometimes do like I said and then um, just try to pay attention to what you're doing and make notes as needed Okay, we are done doing the last white part. So we're gonna take our working yarn, wrap it around the loom about one and a half times, give that yarn a cut. Then we're gonna place the yarn at the bottom of the peg, just like I'm doing here, and pull it up. So it's sort of like a purl stitch, but it's not. So just pull that yarn all the way out and we're gonna go around the loom. Now make it a little tight so you can feel free to release your stitches off the peg once you've pulled it through. So as you can see, we're just pu putting that yarn at the bottom and pulling it up. So we're at the very end here. So I'm gonna do the last couple pegs here. Pull it up and then I'm going to pop these off the peg. Here's a few that I missed. Okay, now we're going to take that long piece of yarn. As soon as we, we're going to first Put our hat inside out and then we're going to grab that piece of yarn and it's going to move and that's what's going to tighten our hat up so just pull it like such and the hole will close don't do it too forcefully it'll it'll go like it needs and then give that yarn a cut then we're going to need a darning needle and we're going to go ahead and seam it and this closes the hole. So at the very top, we're gonna take our darning needle and go around the hole. Pull it tight, but not too tight. And then we're gonna knot it so it stays in place. And then we can give that a cut as well. So then nobody will even see that. I will leave a link in the description box on how to tie a pom-pom on. And I will also leave where I got my pom-poms from in the description box below. And that'll do it for our hat. Let me know what you think. And I thank you so much for watching. See you at the next one. Bye. Before we go, I just wanted to add you can use floss or a thin yarn to place the number 87 in on the brim of the hat. If you'd like a video showing you how to do that, let me know in the comments below.